Good evening everyone and welcome to our Clock and Seaford Ladies at Home event. It is great to have you with us wherever you may be through the wonders of modern technology. Unfortunately, Karen is unable to do her usual introduction here this evening and we really miss her. Both congregations are just beginning to come to terms with the loss of Reverend Adger and we know we face many challenges and changes ahead and we must lay this period of transition and change in the Lord's hands. The whole world has faced unimaginable changes over the last year on a personal level and a professional level. Changes in the way we worship to changes to our world of work. Changes are difficult, but unfortunately, they are a constant part of life. And it is often our attitude to change that defines us. The serenity prayer teaches us, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. People and places may change, situations and circumstances may change, but what doesn't change? Jesus Christ never changes. Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. This Bible verse is the inspiration for a beautiful piece I first heard played by Maureen at a GB display. My younger daughter sang it at my older daughter's wedding at a period when we as a family faced personal changes and I think it is perfect for me to finish off with. Music provides great comfort to us in times of change so I really hope you enjoy Joanna Brown singing Yesterday, Today and Forever and then Joanna will be followed by Lynn and Denver. I hope you all have a lovely evening.
ladies who are tuned in on the broadcast this evening. It's good to be part of it. Uh, I realise it's your women's meeting and I want to thank Karen for her invitation to come and take part in it tonight. Uh, we're going to be singing two or three pieces. Lynn and I and then Lynn is giving a little presentation and I just thank you for tuning in. Thank you for taking the time uh, out of your evening to tune in and I trust that what we would uh, present to you in word and song will uh, just encourage you. Uh, we find ourselves in strange days but it's good to know the Lord and we uh, just want to uplift him tonight in what we would say and in what we would sing. And this first piece that we're going to uh, try is called Something Worth Living For. And you know, the Bible says that he comes to give life more abundant. And that's so true. We're new creatures in Christ and he has brought us into new life. And it is worth living when we live for him. Uh, the joy of sins forgiven. This peace tells us uh, to have that peace with God and sins forgiven and to know that heaven is our home and to know that we have his uh, presence with us as we journey through uh, life and all its struggles. So if you listen to this peace, something worth living for. Thank you.
ladies, there's just uh, myself in this next piece. Uh, it's based on the 23rd Psalm, which is without a doubt my favourite psalm of all. It has been described as the pearl of psalms, its sweetness unrivaled with any other. Every time I read it, my heart is just lifted up in gratitude to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, my Shepherd. And I just pray that you will be blessed through the singing of this piece and through the words of the 23rd Psalm.
Ladies, uh, thank you, as Jennifer has already said, thank you for this opportunity to minister uh, to you this evening in song. And uh, I uh, would like to bring a few thoughts from the Word of God. Uh, I'm not a speaker, so um, I, I will read the few things that I have written down, if you don't mind. I'll start off by wishing you all a happy new year. You know, those are words that we often say with so much enthusiasm. They herald bright optimism, a fresh start, hope for the future. And yet I know I have said them this year with a sense of apprehension. Uh, as we look around us, it is easy to feel that there is little that offers hope. Uh, 2020 has been one of the most difficult years uh, that we in the West have faced in a long time. Throughout 2020, I kept returning to several Psalms that brought great comfort to me as I struggled to come to terms with this coronavirus and make some sort of sense of it. God's Word, the Bible, is our guidebook for life. It is our only source of truth and it has plenty of wisdom to offer those who seek help, strength, guidance, encouragement, comfort or instruction. God's word is relevant to all the situations that we face in life. And so it is to the word of God that we go when we are faced with despair, fear, as so many are today. Romans 15 verse 4 is a verse that sheds uh, light on the scriptures themselves. We read there, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, or for our learning, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures, and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. We, we read in the scriptures, the Old Testament, the New Testament, that it's all there for our learning. We can learn from the saints of the past and that we might have hope. And I just pray tonight as we look at the word of God, that we will learn together and that they will give us hope. I'm so glad that the scriptures don't gloss over the mistakes that the Old Testament saints made, even the New Testament saints their faults and their failures are presented as well as their victories. This gives me great encouragement that there's hope for someone like me. As I look back on 2020, I am keenly aware of mistakes that I made that as a Christian I should have known better. And just like David, who we're going to look at this evening, I'm so glad of God's mercy and forgiveness when we acknowledge our sin to him. This evening I want us to consider Psalm 56 and see what we can learn there and if there is any encouragement and any hope. So while you're looking up the place for Psalm 56, if you have the Bible handy to you, I'll give you a wee bit of the background. It was penned when David was all alone. It was a time of deep distress and crisis in his life. King Saul had tried to kill him um, on two occasions by this stage. Saul's jealousy of David and his desire to kill him there were real personal threats to David. His initial instinct, rather than turning to God, is to run away to save his life. So he has just bid farewell to Jonathan, his soulmate, his best friend, not knowing if he'll ever see him again. Behind him seems to be the blessed enjoyment of friendship, his wife, the royal favour that he had known, the popularity of the people for a season. You know, on the run, he stops in the tabernacle and he's tired and he's hungry and he's in such a state that he actually lies to the priest. He deceives him, something which turns out to have fatal consequences. And then for some reason, David makes his way to Gath, the very city of the Philistines, where Goliath had come from. And of course, the people of Gath recognise David as the one who had slain the giant and he's arrested and ends up in a Philistine prison. And it is whilst in this foreign prison, surrounded by enemies on every side, that David comes to himself in utter desperation and with the future uncertain, we find him in Psalm 56 with his heart returning to God. So we'll read Psalm 56 together. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. 
In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt thou not deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the land of the living? You know, David's life, humanly speaking, has gone from having everything to having nothing, nowhere and no one. So how does David deal with his distress? All of his troubles are instruction to us as we face the trials of life. In verses 1 and 2, if you look over them there, we can just say, well, what I learned from that is that David talked to God openly and honestly about his problems. He asked God for mercy. He cried out unto him. And in the previous psalm, in Psalm 55, verse 22, we see, uh, we see David, um, as he says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So we see David coming and just casting his burden onto God, talking to him about his cares and his distresses. And we too can do that when we're overwhelmed with care. We can just come and talk to the Lord openly and honestly about them. Verse 3, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Isn't that such a wonderful verse? You know, David didn't deny his fears or hide his weakness. Some would say that Christians should not feel any fear, but that is not a realistic appreciation of the world that we live in. It's how we respond to the anxieties of life that gives us hope and a strength that those who don't know the Lord cannot avail of. And so Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 remind us, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and thanksgiving, make your requests known unto God. And the peace of God which passes understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. 3 and 4, verses 3 and 4, as we look at those, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. So David's not hiding his fear He's acknowledging it before God. And in verse 4, In God will I praise his word. In God I have put my trust. And you know, David has learnt that he cannot run away from his troubles. But it is better to trust God in them. David teaches us what to do with our crises in life. To boldly proclaim our trust in God in spite of what is going on around us. We can either focus on all our cares and anxieties or we can focus on the Lord. We can't completely forget about our cares and anxieties, but it's what we do with the, the, um, the majority of our thoughts and how we can exercise our faith over fear. If our focus is on our worries, we can easily be overwhelmed. But when our focus is on God, then we are enabled to exercise faith over fear and to experience that peace that passes understanding that keeps our hearts and our minds through Jesus Christ. You know we may not be physically on the run from troubles in life like David was but many of us try to escape them in other ways rather than facing them through God's help. There are distractions of many kinds that we turn to. Exercise, entertainment, TV, music, just the busyness of life, keeping busy. And these things are not bad in themselves. These are part of everyday life. But if in our distress we turn to them and instead of God, 
then we are perhaps guilty of idolatry, thinking more of them than God. But we are certainly depriving our soul of what is best for us. Once you have a taste of the soul satisfaction that Jesus Christ gives when we live in close friendship with him, nothing else can ever compare. Jesus himself spoke of the living water that only he could give that would never leave us thirsting again for any other source of peace or satisfaction. I must say I was struck uh, during the first lockdown the amount of um, memes and messages that circulated on social media groups that uh, people were turning to alcohol just as one example to to cope with the distressing circumstances we find ourselves in. Alcohol seemed to be for many the the go-to for rallying spirits uh, and the only source of joy in a very scary world. And when an opportunity had arisen that uh, should have caused many to flee to the arms of God, they only sought earthly comfort. The Bible teaches us, however, dear Christian sister, that it is better to turn to God in our troubles and to trust him. That verse again, verse 4, we see how David connects the notion of trust and God's word. He says, In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. For David, faith um, or trust and God's word go together. They are interconnected. His trust wasn't a blind hope or wish cast up to heaven. It was based on God's character and promises. My favourite definition of faith or trust is taking God at his word. God loves it when his children take him at his word. God is faithful and he cannot lie. His word is truth and he has promised that it will endure to all generations. So we can take God at his word. But do we take him at his word? Do you take him at his word? Our attitude should be, if God has said it, then I believe it. That is an attitude or well, frame of mind that can help us, like David, deal with stress, uh, distress and despair. Just one example can be where Jesus, of Jesus we read in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know, those are the words of the Lord Jesus. He has said them so we can believe them. You know, there comes to all of us at some stage in life Times when we feel, but times that what we feel doesn't match up with what God assures us in His Word. Has there been a time when you felt forgotten by God, even forsaken? These are the times when we need to rely on God's promises and speak them aloud to ourselves. We can take God at His Word. And then the next wee section, ladies, uh, if you look at it. David says, I will not fear what flesh can do unto me at the end of verse 4. And then verses 5, 6 and 7, he goes on to list the things that man can do. So he's not saying that um, there are no um, dangers in life. David recognises them. He's not naive to the dangers that we face in life. And when we look around, there are dangers and distresses. So it's not as if whenever he says, I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Um, he's not undermining these things, but just his faith in God is able enables him to rise above his fear. When we focus on God and his word, it brings a comfort to our soul that weakens the grip that fear has over us. We are truly enabled to rise above the raging fears that threaten to break us and we can find peace in God. Verse 8 is one of my favourite verses. You know, we can learn lots about ourselves in this psalm and how we can respond to distressing times in life. But what we learn about God is so beautiful. Verse 6, Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? You know, have you shed tears recently? I have. I know loved ones who have. David, the mighty man who slew Goliath, 
He cried tears of desperation and distress. I don't think it is a sign of weakness to cry when things get as difficult for you as they did for David. But David knows that God cares. He knows just what he needs. You know, this tells me as I look at this, that God is not indifferent to our tears. Sometimes we do think that like the disciples in the boat in the storm we read of in the Gospels when they saw Jesus sleeping and they asked, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? David may well have wondered if the Lord really cared about him. At this point in his life, he is completely alone. He has no human help to turn to. But he now knows that God is close enough to catch every falling tear. And this is what makes God all the more precious to David. Those of us who have a family to live with in the middle of these cruel days, how fortunate we are. This is such a blessing. You know, this evening, if you're on your own because of these rules of isolation, I pray that in the absence of all other human helps, that you will find the very person and comfort of Almighty God who cares for you, that you will find him and know him to be your friend. The other thing that we can learn about God, as well as the fact that he cares, that he's not indifferent to our suffering, we learn, as David said at the end of verse 9, when I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. What confidence in life this gives to the child of God. We may have many enemies or life may not go the way, the way we'd hoped that it would work out. But never forget that we can say, God is for me. The scriptures picture the Lord Jesus more than once as a shepherd of his sheep. One who leads, guides, protects and feeds his flock. We can remind ourselves from time to time that God is for us. The Apostle Paul echoed these words in Romans chapter 8 verse 31 and he even added to it, Who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? We may have our foes like David did, but they have no power over what they can do to us outside of what God allows. The next wee thing that I noticed as I read through this psalm in verses 10 through to 12, they're really a repetition. If you read it, just scan over them. Repetition of the things that David has uttered in the early part of the psalm. You know that he trusts God. He has put his trust in his word. You know, often when I'm leaning hard on God's word, and determining to exercise faith over fear. I do the same thing. I just repeat over and over God's promises to me. You know, dear sister, tonight, if you're struggling with your faith, just repeat over and over his promises. The Lord Jesus loves you and he cares for you and he will never leave you or forsake you. And then the final thing that I wanted to draw out of this wee psalm is in the last verse, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. You know, if there is, I suppose just in that, I, I note that the eternal rather than the temporal is the most important thing in life. If there's one thing that 2020 has illustrated, it is, that the fear of death grips man. Life is fragile. Life is precious. James 4 verse 14 challenges us to keep a right perspective on life. We read, For what is your life? It is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. No one can escape death eventually. And therefore David reminds us about eternal realities. And I'm not downplaying here just the pain that death brings. Earthly partings are extremely difficult. But yet David could confidently say 
that even though the body would one day pass away, that God had delivered his soul from death. You can claim the same promise tonight if you're born again. Whenever physical death comes and however it comes, if Jesus is your personal saviour, then with the Apostle Paul, we can be sure that it will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Having this confidence is not presumptuousness, as some would suggest, but a promise from God to all who believe on his Son for eternal life. 1 John But what a tragedy for any who should in this life escape COVID, cancer, or the worst of what life can throw at us, yet neglect their soul's salvation and fail to escape the wrath of God. In conclusion, ladies, we cannot change the dreadful circumstances around us, whether it be the virus that has made many afraid or the political exploitation of it that has made people despair for the future or something even more personal and unrelated to COVID-19 that is utterly out of your control. The very foundations of our society have been shaken, but we can remind ourselves about the overarching truth of God's sovereignty in his word. God is working out his plan for humanity on a worldwide level, just as much as he is working out his plans for us on a personal level. As Adrian, your minister, so often and so wisely says, it is God's sovereignty that is our sanity. I've had to remind myself of that this week, to not fret and get worked up, as I so often do over things I can't control. But what we so gloriously can control is our spirit deep within us. Because as Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 instructs us, there is consolation in Christ there is comfort in his love. We share our life now as Christians with the very Spirit of God and we partake of the deep affection and mercy of God. So I urge you at the onset, outset of a new year, just as we've read through in Psalm 56 the resolves that David made, that we will resolve to get closer to the Lord in 2020. The only way that this is possible is through fellowship with him in reading the Bible and in prayer. Reading God's word is to the soul what food is to the body. We need to nourish our spirit on scripture every day. I recently read a lovely wee thing about um, prayer by a, an English Christian writer, Anne Benton. I noted it down. It was this prayer, sorry, Bible reading and prayer are not just things that we do, but things that do something to us. They can transform our lives because therein we find God to be real, near and an ever-present help in trouble. So as we look forward into the unknown of 2021, let's keep our focus, dear Christian sisters, on the Son of God, our Saviour, our Friend, our Comforter, our Shepherd, our Carer, and don't forget our soon coming King. Thank you and may God bless this word to your hearts. Ladies, I'm going to sing one final piece and it's entitled Every Promise of Your Word. It's sung by Kristen Getty and uh, it just encapsulates all that really has been said and sung. And uh, I just pray that God will bless you throughout 2021. God bless.
When I stumble and I sin, condemnation pressing in, I will stand on every promise of your word. You are faithful to forgive, that in freedom I might live. So I stand on every promise of your word. Guilt to innocence restored, you remember sins no more. So I'll stand on every promise of your word. When I faced with anguish choice, I will listen for your voice, and I'll stand on every promise of your word. Through this dark and troubled land, you will guide me by your hand, as I stand on every promise of your word. And you promised to complete every work began in me. So I'll stand on every promise of your word. Hope that lifts me from despair, love that casts out every fear, as I stand on every promise of your word. Not forsaken, not alone, for the Comforter has come, and I stand on every promise of your word. Grace sufficient, grace for me, grace for all who will believe. We will stand on every promise of your word. Grace sufficient, grace for me, grace for all who will believe. We will stand on every promise of your word. Amen. Good night and God bless.